princess. His mama was a Cherokee princess, or so it was said. <clears throat> and why I was drawn to that is not because I am a Cherokee princess in another life, but um, because I studied Native American women's literature at UC Berkeley. <laughs> and uh, it took me eight and a half years to get my degree. Hi, Roxy. You know, Go Bears. Go oh, Bears, that's right. And um, I never thought that that degree would be relevant in any way. I just thought that the reading was good. And that's why I did it. But, uh, so you hear the words Cherokee Princess, you get a little excited. And then in the next line he said, And his daddy was a Seminole rebel with a price on his head. And I had been born in Florida, land of the Seminoles. So um, that lined up. <laughs> And then he was singing this story about this young man standing up for the land against big business and uh, preservation. It was poetry. And uh, by the time he was done with his little set of songs, I was I was fully hooked on the music. And we met on the way out the door that night. This was at the Buffalo Gap in Portland, Oregon. And uh, we were just talking about the song Sweet Kate, <coughs> Kate and the Ghost of Lost Love. Well. First thing he wanted to know when he met me, because I was carrying a violin at the time, is if I read sheet music, because he had that part written out, and he'd never heard it on a real violin, and he wanted to make sure it really worked. And so he invited me to come over there you and go. play that song. <laughs> <laughs> well, it wasn't quite that easy. <laughs> I wasn't the singer at the time. I was I was just the, uh, the violin player. We had a singer named Susan Martin, but... Uh, and for a while, we had a five-piece band. It was called Dave Carter and the Texas Underground Express. Pretty much really underground. Like, we usually outnumbered the audience or so underground. <laughs> but um, what fun, though. Huh? We had fun. We totally had fun. Great memories. Now, what, about what year was that? That would have been 1996, 97. Oh, okay. I met him in 96. So in 97, we started playing together as a duo. Something happened. There was a backyard birthday party and nobody else in the band could make it. And so Dave turned to me and he said, do you sing? And I said, hi, I'm in the shower a little. <laughs> and so he said, well, maybe we could try some of these songs and see if we can work them out because Susan can't make the show. And I was like, okay. Wow. I've been, I've been, like, I've been sitting on the bench waiting for this moment, you know, yes. and so, wow. for two years. So, uh, so we started singing and he just kind of spun around in his chair and he's like, uh-oh. Here we go. It's like, I don't think we need the band anymore. <laughs> so it's almost 20 years. You said yeah. Oh, my God. That's a huge chunk like, of my life. It's half my life. Yeah. Almost. Yeah. So this is the first song I heard him play. And it's just called Gunmetal Eyes. His mama was a Cherokee princess, or so it was said. And his daddy was a seven old rebel with a price on his head. And the other kids teased him, but I never did see him to cry. And there was some kind of righteous in the steel of his gun. 
some say he died in the fight and was buried that day. And some say he raged like an angel and he chased them away. But the green hills stand silent.